This stepper motor analyzer uses a galvanically isolated current measuring devices to measure the signals to a stepper motor, allowing you to tune it for optimal speed and performance. However, nearly a year ago, electronics manufacturer Mornsad had their sales to the United States halted due to sanctions. In response, they decided to stop exporting altogether, and now their components are widely unavailable pretty much anywhere. More recently, as stock of our stepper motor analyzers ran out, I recognized that one of the components was by Mornsun and would now need replacing with an updated design. So today I want to give you a behind the scenes look at the changes we made, how we made them, the software we use, how I developed a new enclosure, got the parts made and all this kind of stuff. This video is not sponsored by any external company, but it is supported by my own shop, Vector3D.shop. So if you're grateful for what I've done here, want to see more like it, or just interested in some cool 3D printing gear, please consider supporting by grabbing something from the shop today. Let's jump into KiCad and make the changes to the printed circuit board design. This component right here is the one by Monsan and is responsible for power delivery. All these components surrounding it are all related to that power delivery, and so those will all change too. I found the TPS5604 to be an appropriate replacement, and so head to the schematic to remove the old parts and add the new. The second change in this version is the ESP32 module, which is this large component in the top right corner. The one that we previously used had a removable antenna, which is kind of useful in some circumstances, but it's much easier to just integrate it into the board fully. The main change here is that because the antenna is now next to the board, it mustn't have anything around it that could interfere with that signal. So no screws, no copper, no nothing. So this antenna hangs off the edge of the board in order to optimize the signal that we get. I also separated the connectors for the motors a little bit just to make them easier to plug in and remove for like finger access. With the physical layout completed and checked in the 3D view, it's time to export the bill of materials, which is all the parts needed to make it, plus the Gerbers, which are the manufacturing files. To get these PCBs ordered, I uploaded the files to JLC PCB. Again, not a sponsor of this video, I just happened to use them for this project. With the Gerber files uploaded, I select all the different properties I, that I need, as well as a panel layout for the production quantity, so that they can be more cheaply manufactured and then separated afterwards. It's basically like making a massive PCB rather than loads of little ones. I then upload the bill of materials, which tells it all the components to use, and the position file, which is where all those pieces need to go on the PCB. Now all I need to do is sit and wait for these to be made and get on with other parts of the project that are required in order to make it into an actual product, such as ordering the packaging, stepper motor cables, and power cables to go with these in the box. The next stage of the process is to design a 3D printed case to house the PCB. To design this, I use Autodesk Fusion. The aim here is to create a two-piece shell which can be easily 3D printed and then assembled with the PCB inside and screwed together. The screws make it very easy to disassemble so you can get to the PCB if needed for like repairs or something, but also keeps the cost low as I can 3D print these as and when required rather than having to buy like a thousand of injection molded parts. Here you can see the iterations that I went through in the design to get to the completed version. I started with the one on the top left aiming to get the geometry just right so that everything fits nicely. As you can see, it didn't quite fit, but by the second version, everything was fine. I also changed that split in the case to be on the side, making it a little bit thicker, and then the connectors and screws are all nice and flush. Next, I added a hole for the small switch on the PCB for the sensor calibration and added some text to see how that would look. The Vector3D logo is fine, but the abbreviation SMA I thought might stand for something that I'm not aware of, so I thought I might get rid of that for now. After that, it was just very small tweaks, moving the logo around and making sure the very small holes for the LEDs on the PCB could shine through, and that was pretty much it. At this point, I was very happy with how it worked and how it looked, so it was time to move on to the next step. With the final design completed, I then sent it to the printer at a full batch, so filling the plate as much as possible, so I can validate that the whole thing is going to work as soon as we start batch printing these, because any little things that pop out when you print like six or eight at once can be potentially a big problem if you print 200. So once we got through that process, made any little tweaks necessary, I was happy that everything could print in a large quantity and then just kept sending them to the printer again and again and again until we had all the ones that we need. Once the cases are 3D printed, we need to do a quick heat treatment process on them. This is because as they cool down on the bed, they get these white stress marks and rings on the prints, which just don't look very nice. 
To get rid of the stress marks, we need to relieve the stress in the print. To do that, we add heat. So I just use a heat gun on quite a high temperature for a very short time. Once that stress is removed, we remove the heat, it cools down, and it's basically exactly the same print, but without the stress marks. With the marks all removed, the cases can now be put back together, stacked up, and sit now ready, waiting for the PCBs and screws and stuff to finish them off. Going back to the PCBs for a second, they've now arrived, so we can complete the process as necessary to get them ready for use. All we have to do is flash firmware. So I plug them into the computer, flash the firmware using a quick batch file. It takes a few seconds. Once that's done, I check that it's functioning by reading the flashing light, and then we unplug and move on to the next one. With that process done though, each of these PCB stepper motor analyzers are now ready to use. With all the individual parts now ready to go, we can put them all together. So first we open the case, place the PCB inside, and insert the three screws. This is nice and quick, fairly. Since there's no threaded inserts or complicated threads to use, we just use the machine threads straight into the plastic. While this isn't the most robust connection possible, it's going to undergo only very light usage. So it's fairly simple, doesn't need a really strong joint here, it's just got to hold the case together with a very light PCB inside. With all of those done, we can place each one into a box with the stepper motor cable and power cable, close it up, place a sticker on the outside, and there we go, that's a product ready to go. Hopefully that was an interesting look at our production process for these stepper motor analyzers. Obviously we've had to skip over some details so that the video isn't hours long, but hopefully it was entertaining enough to get a, a reasonable insight into what we've been up to. Of course you can find them right now at vector3d.shop. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.